wow, we really put 100 videos up? Or at least this channel has 100 videos on it. That's so... I think the words you put it, insane? <laughs> Definitely insane. Is I can't believe we've produced that much content. I can't believe we've been doing this that long. And I can't believe the channel's at 100 videos. wonder how many is you and I. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking somewhere in the 90s. <laughs> Really, I jumped on that early. Because <laughs> I started in on, like, episode, I think, four of season five. Or season four. Season four, yeah. And it was, like, the fourth episode of season four. If I had a free hand right now, I'd use my um, handy-dandy app to look how far back it is. <laughs> yeah, but I'm pretty sure it's further back than that because we did episode summaries for individual episodes for seasons we were going through together, and then we did season-long summaries for the seasons that had previously aired, so pretty sure we're looking at season three, also known as my least favorite season. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, well, the important part is 100 videos! Wow, also 102 subscribers. That's pretty cool. <laughs> or it might be 102. YouTube isn't telling me right now in the mobile app. <laughs> Of course not, because the mobile app just tells you, you have a subscriber, and you have a subscriber. That's nice. It is <laughs> nice, actually. Thank you. Please continue to subscribe. Mm -hmm. As she said, thank you to the hundred and so people who have subscribed to this channel for giving us a reason to keep going, and I hope we do a hundred more episodes. Are you going to limit us to a specific number? Thank you to those who subscribed, and I hope we continue to do more videos better. <laughs> I was teasing. <laughs> <laughs> well, now onto the actual episode you've come here to listen to. Here we are, back once again. And hopefully I've been releasing these for a while. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not backed up with projects or anything, and real life isn't hindering my progress. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Ruby. Season 3, Episodes 5 and 6, The Halfway Point. Well, I like how our things are going, and we're starting to see the downfall of the good guys, as it were. Well, you know, they did warn us in the intro song. Repeatedly, every week so mm -hmm. far. <laughs> I know, when the ad for the game came up, I thought, are, are, are we going back? Do we have hope? Oh, it's for the game. <laughs> <laughs> also, I've been doing a little side research on the characters' bases and everything, what they seem to come from, and what apparently is on the official wiki. And some interesting stuff I'm seeing coming for poor, poor Pyrrha. I mean, she's apparently based on Achilles, and Achilles has that whole heel thing, and then we're getting into a really complicated situation. So yeah, I don't see good things in her future. No, because ultimately she's going to choose to accept this attempt to become the Fall Maiden, and it's not going to go well. It's going to go horribly wrong, but not in the way that any of us anticipate. Mm-hmm. And I think at one point she'll still retain that small portion of power, so I'm pretty sure it's a cinder that actually has the rest of the power. I'm pretty sure she won't end up with all of it. And I'm pretty sure at one point Ruby, I think, me and you decided on it was going to be Fall or Spring. Which one did we decide Ruby was going to be? Well, we were looking at both because a rose is more of a spring flower, traditionally. Though there are roses that bloom in the fall as well, especially among the older historic roses. Modern roses, it's mostly spring and summer. But in the story of the Four Maidens, uh, spring was more contemplative and meditative, which is not Ruby at all. Which is more of Blake. Mm-hmm. But fall was more open-heartedness and generosity, which is very much Ruby. Mm hmm And it was pretty easy to pin down Yang. Yeah, summer. <laughs> yeah. And also Wise is pretty easy. Well, considering that, you know, her diagrams basically look like snowflakes, and she's called the Ice Queen. Mm hmm So we know who eventually will end up with the meetings. It, dep it really depends on how long it will take for them to get there, and if they'll actually get all of the power, because apparently the power can be split. So, one maiden was attacked and part of her power stolen. So that's the thing. Right now, theoretically, the other three maidens are still alive. 
Mm -hmm. and intact. Mm -hmm. But shall we go back and go over episode five? <laughs> yes. Rather enjoyed that match. <laughs> one guy with a grudge and one girl who's a brat. Yeah, that was a very fun match. Ooh. <laughs> Poor Wise. She didn't even really succeed in sacrificing herself. <laughs> she ended up more being a distraction. It still worked in the end because otherwise Yang would have been knocked out, supposedly. And that guy held on with like only 16 hit points, which was what Yang finished the match with in episode 6. Definitely a really enjoyable match. And that skater girl, I was like, ooh, I'm not quite sure if I like her or dislike her. I'm like, I'm pretty sure I don't enjoy you because you're being mean and now you think they're awesome so you stop being mean. Which means that you're also wishy-washy and probably don't have a lot of loyalty. So yeah, I'm not really a big fan of you. How on earth did Atlas turn out students like that? Yeah, and I'm, I was especially worried in that match that those two would actually lose because of the fact that Yang has to concentrate a little bit to maintain her semblance and be able to use it. So with her being angry, she can't really focus. <laughs> mm-hmm. I really didn't think we were going to end up doing a whole Neapolitan thing again. I'm like, no, they want Team Ruby in the finals, so this is going to be a win. The question is, how much did it cost us? Let's see. Well, I... Th was it in this episode we started finding out the backstory about the ladies, or is it in the next episode? I should say the maidens? That was all episode six. Okay, just that make sure. 98% sure, since I watched them back to back. Mm -hmm. Well, I watched them back to back too. <laughs> no, but episode five was more Weiss and Yang's match, Penny's match. Oh, yeah! Um, yeah, Penny's match, where Penny basically did everything and the other girl just stood there and went, you're taking too long. Yeah, I'm like trying to figure out that other girl. <laughs> I especially like the part where, like, come to meet me later. And I also didn't like the part of, ooh, I just found something interesting on my pad and it could speed things up for us, evil cackle. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't actually laugh or anything, but it should have been there. <laughs> Cinder is way too elegant for that. Oh, well, you can have an, an elegant evil cackle. Yeah, if you're Maleficent. <laughs> Penny's match was kind of interesting, and that whole thing with Cinder. Ooh, please don't hurt Penny. I hope this friendship with Ruby makes... She goes, I can't hurt you. <laughs> Cinder is probably going to try to take over Penny's body or reprogram her. But I don't think it's going to work because Ruby believes that Penny has a soul. And I believe that Penny is more than just a robot capable of utilizing semblance and aura. Yeah, I think she'll probably control her for a little bit. But like when she sends her out against like Ruby or anyone from Team Ruby, she'll hesitate or delay or Ruby will go, please don't do this. And she'll break free or at least stop herself. Yes, and possibly sacrifice herself in the process so that there's nothing there for Cinder to take back over. Does that cover episode five? Pretty much. We had the two matches. We had, you know, the conversation with Penny. We had Cinder going, ooh, new path. And we kind of already covered a lot of episode six, even though we did it rather out of sequence. I was just about to go over a quick summary of it because... Basically find out about the Maidens, how the whole Maiden system is supposed to work. For a while there, I actually thought that, or it could even still be, that Good Witch is a Maiden. It is possible. And I'm thinking with her coloring, she may be Winter. Mm. I was going to say with her self-control and strong discipline that she would be Spring. Because colorization doesn't necessarily match because we both think Blake fits spring and Blake is black. Mm -hmm. hmm. That's something they didn't really go over, whether or not it could be a faunus that can be a maiden. Because it seemed like they were mostly referring to normal humans, not faunus. Well, there may have never been a faunus maiden before, because since apparently the power normally passes to the young woman that the maiden was last thinking about, how many of the maidens have had how much contact with Bonus. Hmm, good point. And it also sounds like the 
powers may have slipped into her wrong hands before because I mentioned that the thing about the attacker and how the attacker is usually in her mind. So maybe the powers passing to someone using them for wrong has happened before. And that's another reason that the maidens were kind of put into legend. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it's happened at least once. Is there anything else you want to go over about this episode? Because I basically just thought that thing about Good Witch right off the top of my head. It's like, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that when I was watching the episode. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to say this because I think I only said it in our pre-conversation that, you know, Osbin was saying, you know, how from the moment he met the girl who we ultimately find is Pura, that he was certain that she was a candidate and the one. When, you know, this whole time all of us have been thinking Ruby, 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 if not Ruby individually, Team Ruby. And especially since we think Fall might match with Ruby's personality, does Osbin pick Pura because she's probably the most able to deal with the consequences of Ironwood's machine, and he's holding Ruby back as his backup? Mm -hmm. Or he knows that eventually Ruby will most likely end up as being the proper candidate because he did mention at one point well actually in the first episode in fact you have silver eyes like that's an odd thing like that's something very important that he's seen before that he knows means something entirely possible or they could match the color of her mother's eyes hmm. yeah right now ruby's mother is still a bit of a mystery mm -hmm. now on to the part that we both need to where we went I am not comfortable with this. How they made oh, it look yeah. like Yang took out Mercury in an extra out-of-match hit of attacking him blindly instead of defending against an attack from him. How did they manage to pull that off? Not only do we have live audience, but we have cameras that have picked up Yang attacking Mercury without reason. Mm -hmm. And the angle and everything, how far he was away from her... Everything is just completely wrong on the video. It's like that one girl's powers apparently can extend pretty damn far. Because she would not only have to create an illusion of Yang and Mercury fighting, but she would also have to cover up the actual Yang and Mercury. And have somehow line everything up so it would end up in this right, correct spot. Because they're way far apart in what's actually going on. And he jumps, kicks over to her, and then she punches him in the leg. Also... So much to do with like an investigation and examine his leg because the angle of the punch and the shot and damage to his leg will be completely different compared to what actually, well, compared to what was shown. Yes, but nobody's going to bother to do that because everyone saw Yang attack Mercury outside of the match. Instead of actually Mercury doing it. But there should be an mm -hmm. investigation anyways. But it's just like the whole setup bugs me not just because it in story without the little flubbing i see going on i still go ooh, i now want to really punch the bad guys yes because i could handle them making yang out to be the attacker but none of this lines up because he could have said something to goad her into it and actually look like he's on the defensive Kind of like when Winter and Crow were going at it and Crow suddenly puts his weapon away and Winter looks like she's attacking an unarmed man. Mm -hmm. We also have that thing of the fact that no one on Team Ruby will believe that Yang did it. Yeah, so why does everyone on Team Ruby look like they actually saw it happen? I know they will see, have perceived that it happened, but if Yang tells them I didn't do it, that's not the way it happened, they're going to believe her. Yes, but the odds are they aren't going to be able to speak to Yang because she's going to be put in serious lockdown. I don't think it's going to be too serious. It's going to be like a normal lockdown, not very locked down. But if they do very lock her down, I hope she ends up in the same cell where uh, Torchwick is. <laughs> That would be awesome, and that would almost be worth it, but think about how serious this is. You know, fear, dissent, disharmony draws the grim in. This was broadcast to everyone watching the Vital Festival. Why do you think the elephant Grimm's ears twitched? It heard all that and went, <laughs> ooh, it's almost time. Ah, and this is mid-season, too, so this is where things are going to be really picking up. Mm-hmm. And I can't wait for the next episode. Ooh. Well, I really enjoyed these two episodes, except for that one part where my brain's going, that doesn't work. It doesn't work. Not just because it ticks me off, but because it just, that doesn't make any sense. 
that setup is all wrong. <laughs> that was pretty much the only part of the two episodes that really bugged me. Everything else was like, ooh, interesting. Ooh, that's going to go horribly wrong for her. Oh, that's going to be interesting. Oh, I hope this happens. Oh, I hope that doesn't happen. <laughs> Yes, very much enjoyed these two episodes, and I can even even handle Yang being set up, just not the way they executed it. So, to me, that was the only flaw. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much my same problem with them. I'm okay with the good guys being set up for something, but just the way they set it up just doesn't quite feel right to me. And I'm glad that wasn't just, like, um, the end of the season right there. <laughs> that would be horrible. <laughs> That would be incredibly horrible. But based on the intro song, the end of the season could be much worse. Yeah, I know. Let's wish them luck. The suspense is terrible. I hope it lasts. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on Ruby, Season 3, Episodes 5 and 6. Thanks for listening. If you like Lux's art, you can find more of it on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really enjoy listening to us blather on? Try subscribing. Also, comment sections there. Please be nice. Really, really like Lux's art? He does take commissions. And also has a Patreon. All links in the description. Oh my god, Lux, it hit me almost as soon as we finished the recording. We're looking at the thing with Yang and Mercury all backwards. All Emerald had to do was... Bespell Yang to see an illusion of Mercury attacking her. Then all Mercury had to do was be at the correct angle to be attacked, and everyone sees Yang attack Mercury for no reason when Yang was under an illusion that Mercury was attacking her.